Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Have you ever wanted to put a light on the wall, but there's no electrical box there to connect the light to? Well, in this episode, I'll show you how to convert a 120 volt light fixture to a rechargeable battery powered one. One that charges with a cell phone charger and you can put anywhere you like. Let's get to it. So my wife wanted to redecorate this area. She wants to add lights to the wall right here. But as you can see, there is no electricity for light fixtures to connect to on this wall. I wasn't going to run electricity to this wall because let's be real. Nor my wife, she's going to want to be redecorating this area again in the future with a totally different look. So the solution for that is converting the light she wants to battery power lights. Here are the lights she wants to put on the wall. It costs $109 on Amazon. Now because of the shape of the light fixture, I knew the lights were going to be LED light strips. I worked with light strips in the past, so I was pretty confident I was going to be able to convert it. If you're thinking about getting a different style of light fixture, consider you might have to buy the light fixture, then take it apart to see how it's put together, how the LEDs are arranged, and how bright you're going to need your lights to be. All of this will determine what LED lights to get to replace the existing ones, if you even have to replace them due to the operating volts of the LEDs. I'll get a little bit more into this later. Here is the charge control module. You get three pieces for $6 on Amazon. This is what controls how much electricity goes into the rechargeable battery and when to stop charging it to prevent it from overcharging, causing a fire. I'll get into more details and the wiring up of this thing later on in this video. The LEDs are a two pack on Amazon and cost $20. LEDs operate at different volt ranges. I choose these because it ran off of three AA batteries. Each battery is 1.5 volts. So times that by three and it totals 4.5 volts. That's how much volts it's going to take to power up these lights. Not many at all. And it also came with a remote switch. The batteries I chose are a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. I went with these because the charge module stated it charges lithium batteries. I know there are different types of batteries and I'm not 100% sure on all the types and requirements. So I just tried to keep it the same the product I'm using stated it charges. Depending on the LEDs you need will determine the size battery you'll need which then determine the charging module you'll need for that battery. All right, enough of this, let's get to the build. First, I make sure the light works, then test the remote by placing the battery box that has the infrared under the light fixture. It's not the best, but it still works. I check the specs on the LED driver. This tells you the input power it takes in and the output power it puts out. I'm seeing 100 to 277 volts as the input and 20 to 40 volts max as the output. That tells me that these LEDs require a range of 20 to 40 volts to run on. That's the size of a DeWalt power drill battery. That's way too much power for what I need. The LEDs I bought only require 4.5 volts. So it looks like I'll be having to change the lights. I removed the heat shrink to see how this thing is wired up. The driver also lets you know that the red wire is the positive and the black is the negative. I removed the end caps and slid the LED lens off. The cap was held on with hot glue. It took a little muscle to remove it. I detached the driver and removed this other heat shrink. I then remove the nuts that hold the fixtures together. Doing this gives me some slack in the wires and gives me better access to the wires on the LED strips. I detach the wires on the LED strip. I wanted longer wires to work with, so I solder new ones to the existing ones, then pull them through the fixture. Cut out the driver, then remove the lock nut and the wire protector sleeve to reuse later. Now I can install the new lights. 
These LEDs have a protective coating, so I carefully have to remove a small piece where I have to solder my wires to. I measure out and cut my strip to length. You can cut the strip anywhere the two copper terminals are located on the strip. Next, I stick it on the existing LED strip. The new strips fit perfect. I solder new wires on. Install the wire protector. Then reassemble the fixture with the lock nut and nut. I slide the lens cap back on. Then hot glue the end cap back on. Now that that's done, it's time to wire this thing up. Here's a diagram on how I wired it up. The two wires coming out the switch box will get connected back to the LEDs. Solder wires to your battery. Use flux or your solder won't stick to the battery. For the control module, let me go over some things. Your type C wall charger gets plugged into here. There are two LEDs next to each other. One is red, indicating the battery is getting charged. The other is blue, indicating your battery is charged and you can now unplug your charger. Your battery will get connected to the B plus and B negative terminals. Your switch will get connected to the out positive and the out negative terminals. Here I test the lights to make sure they're working before I proceed to the next step. I already have a battery and output wire soldered to the module. Now I can solder the output wires to the switch. Here is the positive terminal on the switch and here is the negative. I solder the negative wire then the positive wire. Because my battery is already connected it turns on. The switch box is too big to fit comfortably in the fixture so I have to cut it in half. For this, I just use some tin snips. I add some hot glue to the terminals to help support the wires in place. I didn't want the ends of the battery touching the metal housing, so I decided to insulate it by putting hot glue on the ends. This will act as an insulator and support the wires. Now I'll check to see how I'm going to set the USB port in this fixture. This fixture just so happens to have these notches in it so I got lucky. You might have to drill a hole for a different fixture. I hot glue the switch in place. I put tape around the battery just to keep the wires in place. Then find a good position to glue it down to. The notches are on the 45 degrees, so I have to set the module on a piece of wood that has been cut on a 45. I also have to set it in place where the LED charger indicator can shine through the notches. Here's a good spot. I hot glue it in place. I give it a test. Now I want to put hot glue on top of the wire connections to act as an insulator and hot glue around the wood and module to keep it from sinking in when you plug in the charger. I plug in the charger to test it. The red light came on and I think I'm good. When it's up against the wall, you'll still be able to see the LED shine through the notches in the fixture. Here's the fixture on the wall. You can barely see the USB port. 
I test the remote. It sucks that you have to get close to it for it to work, but hey, at least it still works. Here's the end results. I think it looks great. My wife is an awesome decorator. Leave a comment. Hit that like, bell, and subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching.